Hey, I'm back again. <laughs> it has been a, a little minute since I, I last filmed things, but um, you'll probably just seen the last few of my pre of pre-filmed things that I was meaning to upload a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> um, I didn't mean to stop filming again, it just kind of peered off. Um, yeah, uh, there's been a bit of a, like with anyone in the UK, anyone who, I don't know if this is maybe global news that cities in the UK are shutting down again, but most people in the UK know that um, Aberdeen shut down again. My boss was interviewed on BBC Radio 1, so we were momentarily famous. <laughs> but yeah, Aberdeen locked down again. We literally just reopened today um, and we're kind of on a cautionary, whatchamacallit, we're, yeah, yeah, we're, we're on thin ice, do you want to say thin ice? It sounds a bit more aggressive than I need it to, but yeah, we're, I can't think of the word I'm looking for, um, it doesn't matter, but we could get locked down again at any moment. It's It just depends how it goes. It just depends how it goes. And with that involved, um, like school start dates kind of shifting and that disrupted Lulu because she was still looking forward to going back to her nursery. And um, she started back yesterday. She's so happy. She's so excited. She's just She's getting all this energy out of her, but it, it did lead to her being a bit restless and disgruntled and genuinely upset that she wasn't getting to go see her friends. Um, so night times have been a bit of a struggle, and as you guys know, night time is when I mostly film. So we're back. She is all worn out, she is already out cold, waking out on with the, the schedule programming. So I'm sorry that if for anyone who didn't want a little a little update like that but here we are I wanted to tell you guys because it's not been the, the most I mean it's not been as bad as like actual lockdown but like I don't know I don't know just the last couple of weeks have not been great <laughs> so this video is going to be talking about all the makeup that I've used since i posted my getting to know my makeup again video my makeup rotation one I did another rotation and meant to film it and that is when all this started so I've just been kind of going between the two and I will talk about that with you guys so I have my original original basket right here um I have my eyeshadow palettes that I was using the color drain queen of hearts palette which I freaking adore I love so so much I did quite a few um dark looks I did a get ready with me with both of these palettes um I will link them in the box you may have already watched them but I did do several looks with both of them um particularly with this one I liked a lot of the darker looks that I was coming out with the purples really like this palette and then I was using the velvet rose from Revolution. If I can, I don't want to break my nails. <laughs> um, but again, really, really enjoying these. Um, particularly enjoying this. This shade is deceptively sheer. I thought it was going to be like packed on glitter, but it's actually a lot sheer and it has a bit of a purpleness to it. So it worked really well with like the, the main purple shimmer in the center there. And I did a lot of like matte looks with this as well. Again, really enjoyed this palette um i got on quite well with the revolution formula um i can i'm personally the sort of person that i can kind of look at something and just kind of gauge i think that's gonna be trash like the i don't know about the eyeshadow palettes that come in like a donut or the ones that came inside a bear they they looked like cheap tat and um so I steered clear of those I couldn't tell you what the quality of those were but they look like cheap tat 
these are fairly decent quality eyeshadows. They are not the tippity top best, but it's four pounds. It's four pounds. For four pounds, it's it's great. It's freaking great. Okay. Um, so yeah, Velvet Rose. Really enjoyed. Next we have my primers, my face primers. Wow. I, oh wow, I've been sleeping on these. I remember I picked these up as a, part of a birthday gift to myself. I think it may have been in 2018. I think. I think it was the same time that I picked up the, um, the L'Oreal Matte Addiction lipsticks, which, again, I need to get going on those and use those, but you know, masks. What are you going to do? Um, but the Airbrush Radiant Boosting Primer, really, really like this. The, the radiance thing doesn't, I don't think the radiance part actually does anything at all. Um, so once I've finished this one, I think I might pick up the, just the original Airbrush Away foundation, uh, primer. There is an Airbrush Away foundation, but I might pick up the Airbrush Away primer from number seven and give it a bash because I really like the texture and I like what it does to my skin. It does just sort of airbrush your skin a little bit, but it's not as um, slick as sort of pore filling primers or like, um, well, it's definitely not as, it's not as um, like putty-like as pore filling primers and it's not as sort of greasy slick feeling as like silicone primers. The Airbrush Away Color Balancing Primer, really, really like this. I'm going to talk about another one later, but I like this one so much more. Um, I think it's maybe with mixed with the texture of the primer. It just has this bit more of a cling to it and um, has a really good level of pigmentation and really helps cover my redness. I particularly like it around my sort of like nose area. I'm not wearing it today. I'm wearing the other one. So you will see a lot of my redness still coming through and I use it a lot on my spots and things. So I really like this guy. My concealers that I had out, I had out the um, the Avon Under Eye Brightening Illuminator and the Conceal and Hydrate from Revolution. Really like them both. Um, they're not astounding, they're not amazing, they're just bog standard concealers. Um, so yeah, I will I will use them until they're finished. I probably won't repurchase either of them. Um, that's that's what I got out of that. The four foundations that I picked out because remember when I first picked this out, I I wasn't sure whether I was going to do this for a this whole basket for a month or just a week. I did end up using this basket for about a week and a half before the original video went live. And then I used it till the end of that week and switched. So I did get two weeks worth of use out of these guys. And then um, I've kind of been going back and forth. But the Clarins, as you can see, I've used a fair bit of the Clarins already. The Clarins Everlasting. I adore this. I love it. I love it a lot. Um, the Pro Longwear, again, I've, I've used a fair bit of that already as well. I'm saying already. Not already, I meant, I meant just as well. <laughs> Use a fair bit of this as well. Again, really like it. The colour is a bit deep in both of them, but that's okay because um, the CCC, the CC Perfecting Foundation from Revolution, as you see again, I've used a fair chunk of that as well. I actually unscrewed the pump bit and sort of squeezed the air out of it, so yeah. Um, this is great on its own. It's It's got great coverage. It's got great lasting power once it's been set. I really do enjoy this for sort of, it, I want to say lighter coverage, but it is quite, has got decent coverage. Um, it's quite similar to this product, but I really like mixing this with the Clarins Everlasting Foundation. And then lastly, I have the number seven Hydra Luminous Moisturizing Foundation. Um, this on its own worked great and then I tried it with a setting spray and it didn't last very long so I thought that was a bit odd um but again I've used a fair chunk of this as well I think I must have used 
each foundation the first time round I must have used about three or four times each and then since then I've mostly been using the Clarins and the Revolution together. For powder we have the RMS Beauty, the Unpowder. I'm still not too keen on this one. Um, it, it doesn't really work very well with a sponge. It is more of like a powder brush application type product. The MARC powder I actually really like. The um, Magix HD finishing powder. I really like this. This is actually really similar to the Estee Lauder perfecting loose powder I think it's called. But it's very very good and it's like a quarter of the price of the the Estee Lauder one. Um, for bronzers I use these two. We have the um, Makeup Forever one which I've, I've worn a good chunk of the pattern away on. I really like this guy. Um, I've got it on today. It is the perfect sort of neutral colour. It's not too cool, it's not too warm and it actually sort of sculpts the face. It's not so much for bronzer, it's more on the contour aspect of things but I really like it, it's really long wearing, easy to apply, easy blending, loved it. Um, the Pro Sculpt Bronzer in Bailey Balio from Revolution. I use this a fair chunk although they, they is a fairly deep pattern on there but again I really liked it, it blends out really nicely, you don't have to use too much of it, it has got a decent lot of pigment to it so you don't want it to go too crazy. It did really remind me of the quality of, well not quality but sort of the same effect as the Becca Sunlit Bronzers. Um, so much so that I did actually purchase it in a, a lighter shade so I can use it in the winter months. Because um, when I originally purchased this, this was the only light-ish shade that was available so I finally got the lightest shade. So I'm very happy with that guy. And then we have highlights. Here we are, my highlights. And this was a bit eye-opening because the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish, I used to think of this as quite, pardon me, quite prominent and, and quite stark, very glowy, very shiny. And it's actually really, really subtle. Um, this is the Lightscapade one. Um, I haven't tried the soft and gentle one again yet but I did find it was very um like it, I didn't hate it it just wasn't like what I've got on today which is this guy you know <laughs> this is like a five pounds highlight this is like an 18 pounds highlight <laughs> you know um but it is very subtle I did think it was a bit powdery but that could just be the age of the product I did enjoy it but I'm not so um, like desperate to cling on to it and make it last forever as I used to be. Same with the Dior one. I was actually quite shocked at my change of opinion on the Dior one. Um, it looks gorgeous in the palm, but on the face, again, it's very subtle compared to how compared to what we expect of highlights these days, it is very subtle. Um, so this is actually a highlight that I'm, I've earmarked for panning next year. Um, there's only six grams in here, so I, I definitely think that this is a type of, this is something I could get finished up within a year. Um, but yeah. So yeah, that's how I feel about that guy. And then we have this thing. This is the Skin Finish Radiance Skin, the Skin Finish In Radiance, I should say, from Revolution Pro. I don't use a very tight packed brush. I use this big fluffy one from Morphe. It's M509. And I just sort of sweep it around. I just load up the brush and sweep it around. And it is so, so nice. It's so nice. Um, I thought it was going to be way too dark for me. But it just has this really nice glow to it. I really, really enjoy it. I definitely probably wouldn't get away with this in the winter. But while summer is still upon us, I'm, I'm going to go with it. going to milk it. For blushes, we have Desert Rose from MAC. Which I actually noticed has actually got a bit of hard pan 
in there. But apart from that, I was really, really enjoying this as a nice matte day-to-day -day blush. In fact, I had to stop myself from using this because otherwise it would be the only one I would use. Um, we have Elf Brilliant Mauve, which is what I have on at the moment. And I, I actually swapped from using my chunkier blush brush to a slightly smaller one. Um, I was using like a smaller dual fibre one and I've actually swapped again to using this guy. This is the Real Techniques setting brush and I've been using this to apply my blush with and it just it works perfectly and I like the effect that it gives. So that is a brilliant mauve. Really loved it. And then we have this guy which was a sort of I don't know, un unexpected love. Um, this is Desire Blush from Primark. And it looks like it's going to be nothing, but it's actually... Like, it looks like it's going to be nothing. I don't know if it'll work on my hand there. But when you get it on the face, it's one of those... I don't know, just very natural flushes to the cheek. It has got... Um, it's got enough pigment to it that it's, it just naturally sculpts and flushes the cheeks without leaving too much colour there. So really like that. Um, I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about in here. Um, I couldn't find this brow pencil so I pulled out another one. So now I've got two two brunette brow pencils on the go. Yeah. <laughs> so the brunette, um, whatchamacallit, glimmer stick brow pencils, we know I love those. Let's not, let's not dwell. Um, the Perfect Brow Powder Liner was an ultimate fail. It was weird. It has this ball in the cap, which has very, I, I want to say zero effect on the powder inside. It just makes no sense at all. I don't get it. And it's it's really warm and it just doesn't do anything. Um, very much enjoyed the Kiko, the Kiko shadow. I've got that on today and I, I use this a lot with the eyeshadow palettes there as well. Um, I think... There are a few things not in here. There's a few things that are in my makeup bag, in my handbag. Um, so I didn't really use these two lipsticks, Trance and Jubilee. Um, I started using Jubilee this past week. And as far as mascaras go... Um, oh, I have another eye base. This is the eye paint from L'Oreal. I only used this once, but I did like it. I just... Right, reached for the Kiko one more. <laughs> um, but yes, mascara. I'm not sure if this is one that was originally meant to be in here or if I just plopped it in. But the Clinique Chubby Lash, I really enjoyed. Um, I didn't use the Clarins one. The two Avon ones. The Super Shock Definition one, I don't like. I don't like at all. Um, and the Phenomenal Volume, um, I actually really liked. Um, I find it, I wasn't able to get it off properly before, but now I use a balm cleanser and I also go over it a second time just for my lashes to make sure this comes off. That does, I'm doing that second oil cleanse on my lashes does help get this off. But I really like, um, it really does have a good impact on the lashes really volumizes them without them sticking together and looking like spider lashes and it doesn't seem to um like smudge a whole lot uh which makes me really happy and the only last things i've got in here are eyeliner it's just a black eyeliner it does the job it doesn't smear too much which makes me happy and then we have the lip gloss which i have on at the moment i didn't really use it a whole lot i'll be honest um, and then from there, from there, I picked out this basket of bad boys, which I'll just dive in 
to and have a quick chit chat. Primers. I have the Mark Magic one, which I didn't use. The Hydra Matte primer from Revolution. It's a serum primer. I really, really enjoyed this guy a lot. Then we have the Anti Redness primer from L'Oreal, which is a lot more liquidy in texture than the number seven, um, which kind of made me like the number seven more. Uh, this one was a little bit harder to work with, but it still did the job really well. It's just not as pigmented either. It just sent, it seemed to blend away a little bit. Um, for concealers, I only had three concealers in here. Yes concealers we had the Tarte one which is the one I gravitated to the most um I think the color might have separated a little bit in here to be honest it's looking a bit like a zebra um along the side of the packaging there and then we had these two which I don't think I actually used at all uh the Revolution Pro, Pro Ultimate Coverage and the NYX Gotcha Covered concealer I don't think I actually used either of those um, as far as powder goes, I had this guy and I had another one. Where it? Here it is. This is the Becca Golden Hour powder, which I don't think I actually used this either. And I feel like it's like half empty. It's weird. And I also used this guy, which isn't a Laura Mercier powder. It's actually two Ben Nye powders mixed together. It is brilliant white. And I want to say it's either pink petal or rose. It's it's a pink one and a white one mixed together in there. And it works really nicely. It If you put too much on, it can look a bit dusty on the skin. It can make your skin look a bit dry. Um, as far as like powders and stuff have come, the Ben Nye powders are very old school and will also factor in that my bed now powders are quite old anyway. <laughs> um, so yes, highlights. I think I just had these two. Yes. Um, I picked out these two highlights. These are both from Makeup Obsession. We had the Mega, Mega Lightning and the Mega Honey. And these I've seen raved about so much and I put off getting them. And then I got them around Christmas time and I, I, I don't want to say I wish I hadn't gotten them, but at the same time, they're not that great either. I mean, I'll use them. Like this Mega Lightning one is, is an inner eye hi highlight mostly. It's a bit too... Is a bit too obvious and stark and um and I mean that in a worse in a bad way stark like it basically looks like a stripe on your face it's like tin man this guy the mega honey isn't so bad but it does look very dry it's not as good as the this isn't as good as the revolution pro radiance powder I I know some people might think that because they're made by the same parent company, they're probably made in the same factory, just in different packaging. They're they're not there. There is differences between these products, most definitely. Um, I would recommend the uh, the Revolution Pro skin finishes over the skin. What you call it? Makeup obsession highlights. So I wasn't too impressed with those. For bronzers, I'd pulled out the Casino from. From NARS which I really really like and I also pulled out the Tom Ford one which again I really really like uh, I would have to play with them more to tell you any more about them I actually think the Tom Ford one like I'm glad I have it but I would never like recommend it I don't think it's all that like I think this is like a, a 40 Oh wait, cat has something it should not have. One second. Can some someone tell me what it is with cats and plastic? Like any type of plastic. Sometimes it's it's broken bits of 
I don't even know what this is. It looks like it might be off of a, a, a cap off of something, possibly. It's either stuff like this or, or looking bubbles. It's just cats and plastic. Just, why? Why? Do you know? Um, so yeah, the NARS one, while still a luxury brand, you do get... Oh my god, you actually get more. You can get more. You get 0.7 grams more in the Tom Ford one than you do in the NARS one. But the price point and what the NARS one actually does kind of makes it rank a bit higher than the Tom Ford one for, for me. So there you go. Um, blushes, blushes, blushes. I pulled out three um, MAC ones. We have Melba, which I love. I love this colour so much. It is amazing. So, so much. Equilibrium, I didn't use, um, but I know I like this one. I know I like Equilibrium. Um, it's just because it was limited edition, I just kind of steer clear of it a lot of the time. And then we had this guy, which I was just, I was actually quite shocked at. Um, this is Love Cloud, and it is a very yellowy pink, and it is actually really, really nice. Again, I'm using like a, a sort of um, not quite so fluffy duo fiber brush uh, to put this on. It does have a bit more of like a brightening effect on the cheeks. It's not so. It doesn't go on quite as almost neon as this looks. Um, but it does have a really nice freshening quality and I, I really like that. I was surprised. I was surprised. There's been a few times I've I've decluttered it and then brought it back in because it's nice to have a shade of pink like this in the collection. Um Did I even have any foundations in here? Yes, I did. I had um, a Tom Ford foundation and I pulled out, um, I'm sure there was a three foundations I pulled in. There's Tom Ford one, there was the Urban Decay All Nighter one, which I didn't like at all. I really didn't like the Urban Decay All Nighter one. It, it just, it looked weird on the skin didn't like it. The Tom Ford one I do like but I can't remember what the third one was but it's not in this basket and it should be. I am I am baffled and perplexed. I can't think of what it might have been. Well whatever it was it can't be that spectacular because I can't remember what it was. That's the conclusion I'm drawing from this. <laughs> um so from there, um, have some lip products. Um, had the pout balm from Rake Revolution, which I quite like this actually. Um, like it does tingle and stuff. I don't know if it necessarily actually plumps your lips at all, but it it was quite nice. It's got a really nice color. We have the um, Estee Lauder Vinyl Rose. No, used to be called Vinyl Rose. This is Potent Petal. Um, again, really like the colour. It looked really nice in the lips. I think this one I didn't use. This is the um, Amen. Amen. Uh, matte lip gloss from L'Oreal. I didn't use this one. But the other two I enjoyed. Um, and then we have a bunch of single eyeshadows. Which kind of make me question whether buying luxury brand eyeshadows is ever worth it because they're not that great and this is coming off of the back of using a four pound eyeshadow palette and I'm probably holding about it pains me to say possibly like 150 pounds worth of eyeshadow right now so yeah the Kiko one I really liked. Um, it was definitely a lot more like taupe than I thought it was going to be. I thought this was more of like a rose bowl colour but it is definitely a lot more cool tone, more taupe. Did enjoy it though. It is very nice. The um, 
Bitter Clove from Estee Lauder. This is from the Victoria Beckham collection. Again, I really like it. It's more of a topper shade. Otherwise, you do have to pack it on. But it goes really nicely over um, a base. The two bases I had out were the Lots of Latte, which I didn't use. Um, I did use the Antique Diamond, and it goes quite nice with Better Olive over the top. Um, I used one of these, but I can't remember which it is. I have Reflection. I think it might have been Reflection, judging by the state of it. Um, yeah, we have Reflection, we have Fever. I used Reflection, and like I only used it once. And look at the chunk that I took out of it. That's crazy. Um, and these are like, I want to say these are like twenty pounds, which is nuts. Um, and it wasn't that great either. It was very dry and 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 lackluster and yeah so was not happy with that olive in my martini from clinique i did really like it but it is a very mediocre shade like i don't mean mediocre in a bad way but it's like generic and and lots of companies and brands have it it's just a, a muddy murky olive gold it's beautiful. I love it. I will wear it to freaking death. But do I need to have a Clinique one? Probably not. <laughs> you know? And then we have the Bobbi Brown shadows, which I went on this kick of just being desperate to have Bobbi Brown shadows. And I have a few more in my collection. And I don't know if it's just because they are so old. Um, which kind of brings me on to a small rant about Debenhams that I'm not going to go into, but I'll not go too much into I'll, I'll briefly summarise it. Debenhams, y'all have a warehouse issue. You want to know why people ain't buying from your beauty hall? It's because you're selling old stuff. Old stuff. I bought this in 2018, one of which was a MAC concealer which was supposed to be for my makeup kit, and it was already two years old. This eyeshadow is is manufacture date marked 2015. It was already three years old when I bought it. Why? Why am I getting sent three-year-old eyeshadows? And in fact, I've been hearing other stories from other people that have bought things from the Debenhams Beauty Hall. Someone bought um, Urban Decay Mascara, Boom up, bone dry. Like you wonder why no one's shopping in your beauty hall, why you're losing so much money because your your stock is old. Stock rotation, people. Stock rotation. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's probably issues. There's probably issues, but sort your issues, okay? Why am I getting sent through your old eyeshadows? I know this. It. I've I've been holding this grudge for like two years. <laughs> But it's the principle. I bought something in 2018. I don't want it to be three years old before I even got it. So, uh, yeah. I don't know if that's what's causing the quality issue in these eyeshadows. Um, They just don't seem to be very pigmented. They don't... They kind of blend away. Um, yeah, just... And I, I don't know if that's necessarily an age thing or if it's just the quality of Bobbi Brown eyeshadows. Like this guy, oh, this guy is stunning. But when I had it on my eyes, it kind of just blended away into like a murky black color and just a shimmering mess, to be perfectly honest. So safe to say, I wasn't very impressed. I wasn't very happy. Um, I might give them another try at a later point. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. So that has been my... Oh, wait a minute. Here it is. The other foundation. The Matte Velvet Plus from Makeup Forever. Yeah, it wasn't... It wasn't all it's cracked up to be. I bought it after like 
years and years of of watching American YouTubers hype up about this and it's it's alright. It's alright. It's not great, but it's alright. <laughs> I mean it's not bad, but it's alright. I mean Yeah. <laughs> so that is all the makeup that I have used um from sort of the beginning of ish of July all the way through to like mid-August. So this is about six weeks worth of makeup usage. As I said, I did go back to mostly using the original basket. I did pull products for a third one, but then I was like, I'm so not gonna get around to filming this. So I just didn't even bother using the products in that basket. I think the only thing, the only thing I pulled out additionally was this palette. This is the Courage Wild Animal Palette from Revolution. And I thought that they were discontinuing this along with the um, the colour book palettes. They're not. They're not. They were just on like mega sale. They just, they were on, on sale and they've been on like three for two offers. Um, so this is like originally £10. It was down to five, but now it's back up to full price. They are really nice. This collection, the quality of the eyeshadows are really, really nice. This was the palette that I mostly used in like November, December last year, like consistently. I made up a makeup basket that stuck this in it and it was pretty much all I reached for. Um, as you can possibly style. This is probably my most used eyeshadow palette at the moment. Like, like actual... How am I trying to word this? Like overall use. This is probably my most used palette. That's what I'm trying to say because um, I use it pretty much mostly daily for like almost two months but it is beautiful I think there's a couple of shades in here that I haven't used like I don't think I've used I haven't used this guy I haven't used this guy but everything else everything else I've used and it just creates really nice looks um, you've got a bit of a green going on if you want to add like a bit of smokiness and the shimmers are beautiful. I love using that as a highlight and the mattes, they just, they're so smooth and they're so nice and yes, <laughs> I really like this palette a lot. Um, so yes, that is me getting reacquainted with my makeup collection. We've had some fun, we've had some laughs, a few um, a few products broke my heart a little bit, Bobbi Brown eyeshadows, um, but yeah, I, I think I will do this weekly um, from here on out and to, so this video doesn't go on super super long, I'll do a separate video the next makeup basket that I pick because I don't know how long this video is going to be it's probably going to be like half an hour long although most of my videos have been lately haven't they <laughs> you love it you know you do um but yeah there's nothing that I necessarily want to declutter apart from possibly the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation I really didn't like that at all it just looked really weird in the skin although that could have been the primer We'll change it up. We'll see what happens. But um, there's nothing that I was like, oh, I just, I want to get rid of that. Um, and there was an overwhelming number of, oh my God, I love this. This is amazing. Um, so that makes me really happy that this project is doing what it sets out to. And it's kind of, it's already got my brain ticking of, you know, what I want to pan next year starting with the Dior highlights like I like it but I don't want to hoard it anymore if that makes sense it's, it's making me realize the products I don't necessarily want to hoard anymore so I'm gonna stop this video before it goes on any longer and I will see you guys next time thanks so much for watching and bye bye